Assalamu alaikum students. I hope everyone of you is fine. Today the topic of my lecture is generalized linear phase. It is little bit lengthy topic. So I am dividing this topic into two lectures. Today I will only define it and in the next lecture we will see different classes of generalized linear phase systems. So let's start what is generalized linear phase system. Today I am going to define it. I will only define it. So let's suppose first you have a system whose impulse response is h of n and the system has an input x of n and it has an output y of n if the system is causal you cannot avoid a delay in the system this system will always introduce some delay and it will provide the output. This delay can be the processing delay it can be propagation delay or it can be a transmission delay or any other delay. For a causal system, you cannot avoid this delay. This system will always introduce some delay in your input. Whenever you will observe, it will be delayed by some amount. Zero phase or zero delay is not attainable for causal systems. So practically, some phase distortion delay is basically a distortion as we have studied magnitude in the earlier lectures uh, we can say a system can introduce magnitude distortion distortion if its amplitude or magnitude response is undesirable and it introduces phase distortion if its phase response is undesirable so if its phase response is undesirable if its phase response is undesirable it this system introduces phase distortion and every system for a causal system it will always introduce some delay so practically some phase distortion is allowed so what but what kind of phase distortion is allowed this is the question so for example for example First, we have to observe what is delay. We have to understand it. For example, you have a transmitter. And there is a receiver. And you want to send a signal or message to the transmitter uh, from transmitter to receiver. This is your environment. In communication terms, it is called channel. So, this channel is known as distortionless if it does not provide, it does not introduce any magnitude distortion in your transmitted signal and it only introduce linear phase in the input what does it mean 
in time domain let's suppose the received signal is r of t and transmitted signal is s of t then this received signal will get a constant gain in other words it is passed through an all pass filter you can model this channel as a filter and your input is delayed by some amount td this is the delay that is known as transmission delay or propagation delay your input needs time to reach at the receiver so this if this td is the delay introduced by the channel so if if you want to listen or if you want to receive your message or s of t you have to extract it from td for example you are sending this message for example and if you are passing it through a distortionless channel what you will get is some attenuation that means k is less than 1 your signal attenuates when it goes through the channel and a delay of amount td so at the receiver end if you know the amount of delay introduced by the channel this thing then you can extract your message from here if you do not know this td you cannot recover this s of t what if you start here then you will lose this information if you start from here then you will have to wait that you don't want so to recover or extract the transmitted message s of t receiver must know the amount of delay introduced by this channel or system so from the previous lectures if you remember if you take its fourier transform it will be r of j omega it is continuous in time uh, sorry the r of t is continuous so i am writing here continuous time fourier transform here this k into s of j omega e raised to power minus j omega t d so from here from here the channel impulse response c of t or channel frequency response c of j omega can be written as k into e raised to power minus j omega td and in time domain the c of t is equal to k times delta of t minus td so from here the magnitude response equals k or constant and the phase response of channel is minus omega td so your group delay will be td so this is linear phase and your group delay is constant whenever 
you have linear phase and your group delay is constant you say your system is linear phase system So, linear phase this linear phase because we cannot avoid a delay in a system for a causal system for a practical system you cannot avoid delay so if this is constant you can easily extract your message if this is not constant or say it is a function of omega then it will be difficult for you to understand where you should extract your message so you can say you can conclude linear phase linear phase is desirable no linear phase are not for example and you can say if this is omega scale let's suppose it it could be omega scale td if if this is not if, if this is a distortion distortion channel then it could be omega scale td then your group delay will be the function of omega then it will be difficult for you for the receiver to extract the message s of t so linear phase systems are desirable in many situations it is particularly desirable to design systems to have exactly or approximately linear phase let us do an example to further understand what the generalized linear systems are i am approaching towards the definition of generalized linear phase systems for this purpose i am taking an example and which is that you have already studied it is ideal delay system whose frequency response is e raised to power minus j omega alpha so if we, if this system is representing a discrete time system its impulse response will be delta of n minus alpha this expression is only true this inverse fourier transform is only valid if your alpha is constant and it belongs to integers you know this is a discrete time system and in discrete time system your time index is discrete and it belongs to integers so if you want to delay if you want to introduce a delay in your system or in the input this alpha must be integers here d represents delay this is simple straightforward definition of ideal delay system but what if this alpha doesn't belong to integers alpha doesn't belongs to integers then the question is what will be your impulse response so in a situation where your delay amount of delay is not an integer you need to process this is your system h of n this is a discrete time system this is your input x of n 
and this is your output y of n for this system if this system is an ideal delay then your alpha must be integers but if this is not the case alpha belongs doesn't belong to integers this system will not work what you will need is you will need continuous time processing of discrete time signals as you have done and studied in chapter number 4 there you saw you had discrete to continuous time converter and this is your input x of n after discrete to continuous time converter you get continuous time signal xc of t then this xc of t is passed through a continuous time system hc of t from which you get continuous time output yc of t and then you pass this continuous time output or signal to continuous time to discrete time converter and you get your discrete time output y of n you will need this system you will need this system when your alpha is not an integer it is some any real value in that case you have to process your discrete time signal in continuous time here this overall system can be represented by h of e raised to power j omega and we need to find it what its function should be you have studied this system in chapter number 4 so as we are discussing ideal delay system which is e raised to power j omega and its response is equal to minus j omega alpha from here its magnitude response equals 1 and its phase response equals minus omega alpha this is the linear phase which is desirable and its group delay is equal to alpha and it must be constant for linear phase systems these properties are desirable in practical situation because you cannot avoid delay in causal systems so in that case if you take its inverse fourier transform what you will get is your impulse response will be equal to 
sine pi n minus alpha over pi n minus alpha this is sink function and here n belongs to minus infinity to plus infinity so here you are getting a sink function in your ideal delay impulse response whereas here your impulse response is equal to this this is the case when your delay is integer and when your delay is not an in integer your impulse response equals to this this impulse response comes from this system now because you are processing your input in continuous time and then you are getting your output by converting your continuous time signal into discrete time signal and recall the interpolation filter and its role that you have studied in chapter number 4 here this ideal delay impulse response will act as an interpolation filter now let us see some properties of linear phase systems let's suppose I write my impulse response as magnitude response into a phase response which is linear and here omega belongs to le <coughs> less than pi one of its property is if alpha is constant and it belongs to integers then the impulse response will be symmetric about alpha or nd Similarly, if your alpha is doesn't belong to integers, but alpha equals integers plus one by two or half, one half. In other words, 2 alpha is constant and belongs to integers then your impulse response is again symmetric about alpha if these two conditions doesn't hold your impulse response will not exhibit any symmetry let me repeat if your amount of delay is constant and it is an integer then your impulse response of this system will be symmetric about alpha which is equal to nd and it belongs to integers similarly if alpha is not an integer and it e equals an integer plus one half in other words if it is equal to two alpha equals constant of it to alpha belongs to integer then your impulse response will again symmetric about alpha 
if these two conditions doesn't meet then impulse response h of n will be non symmetric now let me first show you why the impulse response is symmetric for example you have a frequency response and it has magnitude response and its phase response is minus j omega and alpha and which is a linear phase then you can split this system as a system which is real valued system real valued system with zero delay cascaded with a system which is which is a constant delay or here you have input and you have output you can split it like this you have a real valued system with zero delay and a linear phase system so because this is real valued your h of n will be symmetric in time because you know if your frequency response is real valued then in time domain using the properties of fourier transform in time domain you have symmetric waveform let us do an example so that you can understand the properties of linear phase systems let's suppose you have ideal low pass filter whose frequency response is this is low pass filter equals e raised to power minus j omega alpha and it is zero elsewhere where omega is less than omega c omega c is any constant and it is zero elsewhere and if you take its inverse fourier transform you will get the impulse response of low pass filter as a sink function omega c n minus alpha here this omega mod less than omega c is less than pi and this its impulse response is shown here one thing that you may observe that the reason behind we are getting sync function of this low pass filter or an ideal delay filter that here the magnitude response of this filter is like this minus omega c and plus omega c and it is constant Magn this is the magnitude response of this filter and you know when you have you have rectangular waveform in frequency you get sync function in time domain so in this case alpha is equal to 5 and it belongs to integer then you then you can see this impulse response is symmetric 
around n over alpha this is the amount of delay and this impulse response is symmetric about alpha is equal to nd is equal to 5 and it is it belongs to integers in the second case where your alpha is not an integer instead it is 4.5 which is integer plus 1 by 2 as this integer is 4 plus 1 by 2 is 4.5 then the second property holds which states if your alpha or 2 times alpha is an integer then your impulse response will be symmetric about alpha so you can see here the impulse response is delayed by an amount 4.5 here you have the peak of the sync function here you have peak here from this peak your waveform is symmetric your impulse response is symmetric here the symmetry is around 5 and here your symmetry is around 4.5 although you are not getting any sample at 4.5 there is no sample present at 4.5 because in discrete time systems your time index n only belongs to integers and this waveform is the consequence of interpolation in continuous time processing of discrete time signals whereas here your alpha is 4.3 which doesn't belong to integers nor its 2 alpha 2 times alpha belongs to integers so here there is no symmetry around this point this waveform is anti-symmetric around 4.3 <coughs> from this system you can say if your alpha if your alpha is not an integer you first convert your impulse response into continuous time impulse response then you shift it and again you digitize it then you will get this waveform now let us do another example in the previous chapter you studied a system whose frequency response was like this sine of omega by 2 multiplied by a linear phase term e raised to power j times constant which is m by 2 here your alpha is equal to m by 2 this is a linear phase right and here the range of omega is from minus pi to pi if you recall the system is known as moving average and this is its magnitude response
for some arbitrary value of m if you sketch this magnitude response it will look like this it will look like this it is symmetric <coughs> around 0 then here it is 1 let's suppose here actually it is symmetric so you must have the same magnitude at both sides and let's suppose it is minus 0 0.2 then it is pi minus pi if you plot the magnitude response or this function your magnitude response will be look like this but we know h of e raised to power j omega is equal to magnitude of e raised to power j omega into e raised to power minus j omega alpha here this is real valued function it is real valued function and if its value gets negative the only thing that will happen is for negative values like here and like here you introduce an additional phase delay of pi radians what does it mean let's suppose at this point here which is minus 0 0.2 your magnitude response was equal to minus 0 0.2 into e raised to power minus j omega m by 2 this is a linear phase and this minus this can be represented as minus 1 into 0 0.2 into e raised to power minus j omega m by 2 this minus 1 can be written as e raised to power j pi into 0 0.2 into e raised to power minus j omega m by 2 uh, let me replace it with alpha then this 0 0.2 into e raised to power j pi e raised to power minus j omega alpha this will become 0 0.2 e raised to power minus j alpha plus pi So the negative values only contributes towards an additional phase of pi radians. So here these negative values will change this linear phase and it, it will introduce a constant in it I am calling it beta but it still remains linear so we can say for this moving average for example for this moving average system your magnitude response magnitude response is bipolar which have positive values as well as negative values if you do not consider the negative values then you will have to introduce additional phase of pi radians in your phase it means your phase response if it is linear its generalization will be minus alpha omega plus beta 
this is a linear phase moreover because that h of e raised to power j omega magnitude was bipolar it had negative values as well as positive values we can replace this notation with a of e raised to power j omega and we call it bipolar magnitude response so the overall generalized linear phase systems can be represented as h of e raised to power j omega equals a bipolar real valued function a of e raised to power j omega times e raised to power minus j alpha omega plus beta that this is the definition of generalized linear phase systems you have bipolar function bipolar function of magnitude that can go to positive values as well as negative values and your phase is linear and if you observe from this expression from this generalized linear phase expression your phase response will be h of e raised to power j omega which is minus alpha omega plus beta which is linear and your group delay is still a constant minus of derivative with respect to omega of minus alpha omega plus beta is equal to alpha which is still constant so this is generalization of this expression h of e raised to power j omega magnitude into e raised to power minus j alpha omega where this magnitude response is restricted to positive values only whereas for in in this expression Here, this a of e raised to power j omega is bipolar function, and your phase response is a linear function of omega. This is end of today's lecture. In the next lecture, I will define some classes of this linear phase systems that will be used in the design of filters. this is end of today's lecture if you have any question you can email directly thank you